Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Man City squander a two-goal aggregate lead as Real Madrid score three goals between the 90th and the 95th minute to advance to the Champions League final in shocking fashion. Liverpool overcome a first-half scare against Villarreal with three second-half goals in Spain to book their tickets to Paris. How these results affect the upcoming Premier League matches for Liverpool and City. And we welcome Bournemouth back to the Premier League. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. And as ever, mate, before we get to that dramatic football action, make sure NBC Sports Predictor is part of your match week routine. Play Premier League Pick'em for free for your chance at $50,000 jackpot. And we actually got a winner this week, Mr. Musto. Somebody got a 3-0 win for Manchester United against Brentford and picked up $50,000. All you've got to do is predict the outcomes of Premier League matches correctly and the jackpot is yours. Score big when you download the NBC Sports Predictor app today. And we are going to get to today, my friend, because we have had another feast of, of, of Champions League football o- over two days. Today, in the, the most dramatic uh, uh, of circumstances, Manchester City again have tumbled out of the Champions League when they look to be in control with minutes on the on the clock. Um, where do we start with Manchester City? Where do we start with Pep Guardiola? Where do we start with the game? Well, let's start at the beginning and the scenes as the Real Madrid players, Rob, came in on the bus to the Bernabeu. And my goodness, did you see the images outside yeah. of the amount yeah. of fans there? I mean, like, it was it was always going to be a big atmosphere. Um, it certainly was in the stadium. And and to be fair, I mean, we can get into all the details of it, but the first, I mean, it wasn't a great game, was it? Given what no, we saw in the first no. game, 4-3 to Manchester City, goals everywhere, chances everywhere, Benzema was amazing. You know, the, the, the start of this game, I guess, understandably, Rob was a little cautious, it's a, the one goal advantage for City means that they don't, they don't really have to go for it. They don't, they don't have to get into their to their kind of super football attacking mode. And Real Madrid were also a bit clunky with possession of the ball. So just initially, Rob, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of what you saw from them and also the team selections, let me just hit a couple of things, particularly in Man City that, I don't know, I, I mean, from nowhere, Gabriel Jesus is, is now... I mean, flavour of the month and playing as yeah. a number nine where we hadn't seen him play there very often. Pep does go mm-hmm. with players that are in current form, mm-hmm. no matter what has, has worked before in terms of Foden playing a false nine. They did um, switch over Foden and, and um, yeah. Jesus a little later. But that was, that was still something a little surprising. Walker was back, Cancelo was back, Rob, so the better defenders were playing in the game. I mean, we saw a tremendous kind of I mean, just a, a one-on-one with Vinicius Jr. and, and Carl Walker on mm. that far side, particularly in the first half, so many times. You know, Walker got back. Vinicius is so quick. So, you know, in that phase of the game, really, um, it was it was kind of a little bit cautious, wasn't it, cagey? Yeah, uh, I thought there was caution on both sides. I think both respectful of the attacking prowess and the ability of, of people on the pitch. Walker certainly makes City more defensive and obviously can handle the pace that Vinicius can offer. Um, from City's point of view, at times, I thought the, the wide players came quite deep and sat in and, and Kevin De Bruyne was the one who linked yeah. a little bit more with, with the guys. So it's almost like a 4-4-1-1, which is, yeah. is, is also a bit more respectful to maybe what Real Madrid could do. Yeah, there wasn't a lot in the game. It wasn't a brilliant game of football at that stage. And and as I'm watching it, I'm th- one of my notes is I've got probably a million notes now written down here and I can't tell I know. one from the other. Too many. The, first, I know. the first one I remember was saying, bit of a test for City out of possession today. Like when Madrid had the ball, how, how good are they going to be? Because it wasn't a sparkling football day. So a little bit more mm. of a test of like, OK, what's your structure like? What's your shape like? And in many respects, Rob, it, it wasn't too bad. A couple of chances. Benzu- Benzema missed a couple of chances. Vinicius had the one early. They didn't have a shot on target in, in the first 45 minutes. And you're kind of thinking, well... Yeah, this will do. We, they've not turned the, you know, it wasn't a Villarreal situation where they've flown at it, they've got the goals, the place is jumping. To a certain degree, mm. you know, City and nil nil, I thought was is a good is it was a good place for City to be at half time. Yeah, they were, they were absolutely fine. Uh Vinicius Junior Rob right at the start of the second half. 
Mm. This is a sitter. This is a sitter, yeah, by the way. Right. And, and, the, and the, the warning signs are there a little bit. The Real Madrid are going to continue. They're not going to go away. We know that with the games against Chelsea and PSG in previous rounds. Um, and then there was a few a few moments where things changed. Carl Walker, Rob, went out mm. of the game, didn't he? Struggling. Uh, I think it was the 63rd minute he went down. I'm thinking he's going to come off. He didn't. He carries on. And then goes off in the 73rd minute. Um, but just after that, Rib Maris scores a goal, Rob. Now that gives them obviously one nil up in this tie, a two goal advantage in you know in the tie aggregate score. Yeah. And at yeah. that point, you know, everybody, commentators, everybody, I'm start you're starting yeah. to write your notes, you're mm. starting to think about <laughs> tweets and all that kind of stuff, thinking that that City looked to the better side, possessed the ball well, started to control the game in the second half. Real Madrid kind of looked I, I won't say out, but they look tired. And yeah. City's football started to, you're like, well, here's the control. Yeah. They've yeah. got the goal. Um, they should be plain sailing from there. Um, but obviously, there was a big moment, my friend. Rodrigo, the substitute, the young Brazilian kid, mm -hmm. 21 years of age, comes into the game. And in the 90th minute, the fireworks begin. Mm -hmm. I'll let you take over. But well, can can we just go back a little bit before that? And and I'm I'm not going to do this thing. But again, I, I had a little bit of a look on the radio. I've had a little look on on social media. Um, City fans. So Walker comes off. Uh, Zinchenko comes on. I think which we we, we would kind of expect. Yeah. Cancelo goes to right back. And he... Cancelo. Um, Gundogan comes on for Kevin De Bruyne. Little bit now. Gundogan was involved in the uh, Mares goal, put, made a nice move, switched the play. Mm. They got it out to to mm. Walker scores. Mm. Few few Man City play, uh, fans questioning, and I'm not I'm not big on this. Like after the event, easy, but some were saying maybe KDB wasn't having the greatest game. But you know, with that amount of time on the clock, was it a time to take him off? Listen, always you know what they call it Monday back Monday quarterback in when you when you Mon Monday event. morning quarterback yeah 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 it, there was a few questions about that Mores came off for Fernandinho people saying well you know what is that is that because there's a two goal lead you're holding on to it but you're taking off probably two or three and again just before Rodrigo gets the goal Jack Grealish Rob who came on um, has a couple mm. of chances to for Jesus to possibly seal the day. One was a great block from Mendy. One he should probably should do, done better. I kind of think you know those were Jack, those were the Jack moments that gets him that takes him to another level that gets him into this city team that stops people saying, "Well, is he really a player? Does he really fit?" If he has one of those moments, a bit like Kai um, Havertz had, had at Chelsea, a lot of the, the 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 noise goes away. Rob just felt there was a couple of those instances that. I thought Jack should have, could have done better. I don't disagree, Rob. And I think what we're going to get onto here is, I mean, it was a tremendous uh, block, was it, from Mendy yeah, off the line Mendy to Jack Grealish? Totally well. Totally yeah. And also, of course, Real Madrid made substitutions. Mm. You know, Pep afterwards talked about it, Rob. They had five attacking, five strikers in the last yeah. kind of five, ten minutes yeah. of regular time to try and get... Um, to try and get the equalising goal and to, to send it to extra time. But for two a two-goal lead going into the 90th minute yeah, and then to give it away and, and concede those those three, three goals, goals in, in yeah. five minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I, my, my thoughts after the game, Rob, are... And, and we hear a lot of reaction. I see social mm -hmm. media. I see yeah. TV commentary talking about how did that happen? That's crazy. Of course, a ton of credit goes to Real Madrid, Rob. A ton of credit yeah, goes to yeah. them for keep going. Benzema with the assist. Rodrigo flicks the ball in. Then there's a little a little uh, glancing header onto yeah, Rodrigo for the second goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. So there's a ton and, and absolutely right. I mean, that atmosphere in the Bernabeu, I mean, is incredible. Right. But a lot of people saying, God, I can't believe that. What a, what a crazy, which is a crazy game. But Man City are the, were the better team by far over two legs. Hmm. And I, I'm I'm like, no, they weren't. No, they weren't. They conceded six goals, Robbie Hill. They conceded three goals, three goals in five minutes. They, had, they were, they were going to go through in the 90th minute. They conceded two goals to send it to extra time. That's not a, a well-rounded team that, that deserves to be said the best team didn't go through. Best teams, great teams, better teams – Find a way. 
they clear it off the line. They get people back. They head the first ball out. They don't dive in on the on the penalty. You know, it, it, they didn't go through because they conceded six goals. They conceded six mm. goals in a game that was, and we know that the way that Pep plays, and we'll get into that in, in, a, in a little while, yeah. but their, their, their philosophy, their, their um, the lineup and stuff, it, it, it gives opponents an opportunity to do things. And Real Madrid are a class side. They've got great attacking players, Rob, and they made them pay. They had to wait late. And people say to me, well, you know, Real Madrid never had a shot on target for 85 minutes. Well, the game doesn't last for 85 minutes. That's the mm. point. It's like in golf, Rob, and I'll let you get in a second, mate. It's like when you when you when you you're two up, right? You're two holes up with three the three holes to play. I've said this before. The hardest thing in golf is to close, is to close out the match because the other opponent's going to go flat out. You change your game a little bit, and it's the hardest thing is to close. This was the same today for Man City. The hardest thing is to close a game out like this away in the Bernabeu against a team like Real Madrid that have won it 13 times before, and they couldn't get it done. I hear you, um, and I, and I can't. To disagree with, with anything you're saying. I think I'm going to pick the point that you, you've just made. And it's a point that, that kind of has hit me over the two nights, really. And I know we're going to talk about Liverpool and Villarreal and what that was and how that game started. But both these football clubs are led by two managers who have a very ingrained style of play, a very ingrained strategy of what they're going to do, of how they're going to win football matches, both very different. But Pep Guardiola is going to do it that way, Rob. He's going to do it winning football. When we had a preview of this game, I think we both talked about the difficulty. It's not going to be easy. I think you were a little bit stronger saying you feel City football will find the way because they'll be better players. The football wasn't mm. sparkling tonight and no. it didn't find a way to give them a big enough lead that if Madrid was coming up, they didn't get a second goal tonight that would have made the difference and whether that's good defending by finishing whatever you say but Pep Guardiola Rob is going to win Champions League or lose Champions League with Man City doing it his way our, our producer put a, a note on on our WhatsApp note and so it said why didn't somebody just man mark Benzema and I think we were on the thing and you sort of said not Pep's way they kick the balance they'll play light and left that's what he does mm. and almost mm. that in itself is a great microcosm of Pep Pep isn't going to do it other ways, Rob. Other other play, other um, coaches across Europe, whether it's in the Premier League or whatever, will change things, will do things. Pep Guardiola's got a strategy that served him well, that's won him enough trophies, and today he will say we weren't quite good enough with the ball. We didn't take our chances. He won't talk about the, de the defending. He'll Listen, they, they put people in the box. They didn't defend it well, well. Well, that won't be the first thing I think Pep goes to. Pep's biggest thing will be we didn't play. I heard it. And um, he did an interview um, that came on UK, uh, UK TV and he, he, he said where we didn't, we didn't play well enough. First, first off, we weren't at our game. Second off, a bit better, got the goal. But it's all about what they did with the ball, Rob, not what they didn't do without it. Isn't it time, Rob, that we have a little chat about that, about Pep? 11 years ago with Barcelona, mm -hmm. with an amazing team of Xavi and Iniesta and, of course, Lionel Messi. This has happened a lot. Mm -hmm. In big moments, the biggest moments for Pep, and this is but this is this is going back to you know Bayern Munich as well. He had an all-conquering, powerful team at Bayern. He's had the same at Man City. In the biggest moments in this competition, he can't get them over the line. I've got a theory, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but I want to ask you first, and, and, and basically, of course, a difficult question: why? Why is this? Why is this competition at the end, the final last year, the semi-final now and in previous seasons, what is it you think about this team? It's had tons of money spent, this brilliant manager in Pep that domestically like, is, is super dominant. Why can't he get it done in this competition? Well, the simple fact is, Rob, and, and, and it's, it, it, it's going back to my same question. I don't want to steal your thunder because I, you, I, I know your views on this and, and mm. don't want to preempt it. But his style, his way of playing with, with the groups of players he's got, is dominant in, in domestic football, was it three out of four titles, is will get you to a certain level quarterfinal, sem, semifinal of a Champions League. But on the big day against... An informed Bayern, an informed Real Madrid, an informed maybe PSG or Liverpool or one of those top things. 
with top attacking talent, you can get to Pep's teams. Mm. And, and that, yeah. that, that getting to Pep's teams, I remember when he first came into our league, Rob, and we'll go back to it, and he talked about that first year and whatever, and his big thing was he doesn't, he doesn't um, practice tackling and defending because if you have the ball, you don't have to do it. That was his big mm. line, Rob, and I always remember, and I thought, wow, this, this guy, that's it. That's him. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, in domestic competition, has been all-powerful, all-successful. His teams that he's had... At these at the in these leagues at these clubs are being so powerful that that philosophy the way that he sets his team up the team balance rob there's not mm. another team on the planet or for as long as i can remember that that tilts his team selection and the balance between artists and soldiers like pep it, it, there's no team like it attacking players in de bruyne and bernardo silva they're always getting forward in midfield very you know that balance and it's been brilliant to watch mm. and in domestic football that has been super sufficient to win leagues. Teams get 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 pulverized by the possession, by the football, by the press. They go. The, the, the teams can't get out. And in, in over thirty eight games in the Premier League, that has been super successful. Of course, against the best sides in England, he sometimes there's been some great games. But generally, domestically, Rob, hmm. his his philosophy and, and and balance is 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 safe now. I would argue that at the top end of this competition, where you've got the best teams on the planet and, and certainly around Europe, of course, they're better than that. And they can get out of that grip and they can keep the ball and they can and they can have a game with with uh, Man City. And when it happened today, Rob, in regular time, I know there's not a ton of opportunities and ton of chances. It, the game looks different. Man City have the ball, go up the other end. Real Madrid, ping, ping, ping. Oh, they have the ball, go up the other end. The... the Pep's securest play is when they're in the opponent's half, they press them in, there's no way for them to get out. And they they face that 90% of the time in the Premier League, where they have they defend with the ball because there's not much of a threat. But at this competition, the, the better teams, the better attackers, they use that philosophy, that team balance, there's a little light in midfield and protection, that they give you a chance. And what I'm saying is, I'm trying to summarise it, in domestic football, teams aren't good enough with that chance to hurt City and ask them questions. That's probably a better way of doing it. Against Real Madrid and the best teams in Europe, they they get asked a lot more questions and they look more vulnerable. And they conceded six goals in two days against a Real Madrid team that's obviously super spirited, durable, experienced. But, you know... It, 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 it's still it, it's still somewhat surprising that they've come up they've they've beat Man City over two legs, and I just want to I just trying to throw a theory out there that mm. you know it's the way he does it, Rob. And he, I, I don't think it's going to change. Yeah. Now yeah. I think yeah. you would. Do you know what? Should he mm-hmm. should he tweak it a little bit? And, and I said, well, he, he he does it the way he does it. It's, it's a bit Bielsa like, isn't it? What he does at Leeds, and it, and that's that's the guy. That's his philosophy. That's what he's bought on. That's what he trains on. That's what he works yeah. on. And, and, and when it's it vulnerability, yeah. and accept yeah. a little bit of vulnerability. But okay, and um, and before we move on, um, we will talk a little Real Madrid and, and, and Carlo Ancelotti. By the way, on the other hand, yeah. he's won a title in that. But let me go. Let me let me throw another another angle at you, Mister Musto. I want, want, want to get your take on this. Pep, okay, it, quite rightly, the big questions, the critics will be out now, oh, can't win the big trophy, blah, blah, blah. I get it, I see it, he's ultimately in charge. Let me turn the spotlight on some of these players, Rob. Let me turn the spotlight right there. How many times have City got knocked out of these competitions when they were bang on it, when they were brilliant and, and played that football that we saw in the first half at City last week? When have we seen City get beat then? We haven't. Sometimes on those very, very big days, some of City players don't don't quite turn up, as we've known. Champions League final against Chelsea last time out. Weren't great, Rob. Today, first half, weren't great. Second half, got into the game, got the goal. Some big-time players who who get to a certain level, Rob, don't quite do it. And I think, yes, the the manager should get credit, but let's look at the group of players. Is this group, if this was Spurs, we're going, ah, that Spurs just can't get over the line. Well, mm, mm. as great as these are in domestic football, Rob. 
Well, it's a, it's an interesting point, Rob. It's a very interesting point because again, it goes into that philosophy thing. Mm. If Phil Foden, and I'm going to say the ones that, that you're thinking of, maybe yeah. Phil Foden thought was quiet today. Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne didn't have his best game. Yeah. Yeah. Riyad Mahrez scored a great goal, but took him time to find his game. Yeah. Gabriel Jesus. So back to the philosophy. If Correct. their football and their expansive self isn't mm. at their normal level in these high games, then oh, the other team have the ball and they Correct. break on them. And they find their little patterns. It's more of an open, even game against the greatest teams. Instead of, if if these guys, Mares and Felden, uh, don't have a great game against the Premier League yeah. side, well, they, yeah. they're probably going to mm. give them the ball back. Yeah. They're going to give them the ball back each time. And City will go again until they find their rhythm. So you make a good point. And yeah, I, you know, we, we you know, Pep said a few years ago, Rob, this team needs experience in this competition. It's going to take a while. They've got to get there and kind of fail, learn, get there again, fail, learn get there again, and they've got there again this time, and still they can't get by difficult moments. Mm. Um, and it, it's just, you know, it just begs the question, and I don't expect anybody, you know, Pep to change his philosophy, yeah. but doesn't it beg the qu question, Rob, of, of the successful teams in this competition? Uh, you've got to have, you got to have both sides of this. You've got to, you've got to have both sides. You've got to have a, a spirit and a defensive desire of course, with the attacking talent. And, and you know, you, you said about certain players didn't turn up. I mean, the spirit uh, of Real Madrid, I, is yeah, that spirit yeah. there with, is, yeah. there, is there enough characters, winners mm. that might pull it out of the other players to come back yeah. and up defensively and throw your body on the line and head the balls away when Rodrigo goes in and challenges? Is it lacking in that a little bit? Roger played well, I thought. Um, yeah. I thought Bernardo Silva was good. What was a good, good yeah, player he, he is. Well. Yeah, he played but well. But that, that yeah, philosophy doesn't account for an off day, yeah. you know, against these better mm -hmm. teams. No, it, 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 I've called it football. It's like, it's like regal football. It's like football at this higher level. But every now and then, even that, that needs a little bit of, of dirt and grit and putting your yeah. foot in and being defensive mm. and stopping it going and and listen maybe you know that's something they've got to look at maybe that's something they've, they've got to work out but again let, let's just turn it to Real Madrid Rob because how they, yep. how this team are in the final by the way I mean I, I did as I was writing my football notes I, I, in the end it was like I, I'm going to stop this and, and I looked on and I went I went under Google and I went how do you kill a vampire because it's like <laughs> I, They've been gone, haven't they? They're like dead. And, and apparently you've got to oh. drive some a stake in the heart and cut <laughs> the head off. Because, like, you turn around, they're gone. They're done. They're, they're finished. And then you you look around and, and the hand comes up and they start going again. And to my point, and, and this actually just made, gave me another point, Rob, part of why I think City over the two games, and, and regardless of the score, City should have won the game bigger at, at the Etihad uh, last week. When they played brilliantly and allowed Madrid to get back four three, game. it was four, four three. three. Rob, it wasn't, it wasn't a four three game. It wasn't a four three performance. It was a four one performance, really four two at max. And 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 they allowed that third goal, and it gave Madrid hope. And we've seen what they've done, and we've done the spirit. And I want to give some credit to um, to Carlo Angelotti because he is the coolest guy in town. And and I, and I want to get your take on something. I mean, he brings on Rodrigo uh, for Cruz. Camavega comes on, I think, Casemiro in midfield. Both players who, who start to influence, influence the game. He makes subs that, that, you know, winning game, change the way they play. I thought there was a good European know-how on the pitch, even though there were people going down, people getting across. And Cruz, Casemiro, Modric. Through, all, yeah. all that stuff was good. And, and here's one I, I want to throw at you. When we talk about the pantheon of, of, of European coaches and we talk about these great football minds, Carlo Ancelotti never comes in that conversation. Never, Rob. Why is that? Why, mm. why is why is it? What he's won, where he's been, his body of work. What why does he is he does he not talk the right language? Is he not that, you know, guy who you you know, is he not as, as media friendly? Anyone who plays for him apparently loves him to death and the Chelsea players right. and all that. But just something, I don't know, seemed to hold him back by being in those conversations. Well, the stuff I read about him, Rob, and I read I read a lot of long articles about mm. Ancelotti, well, the ones that, that are a bit, a bit detracting of him. And it's like, yeah. you know, there'll be, there'll be stuff out there that I've read that he, he, he's, he does nothing tactically. He do he's, not, yeah. he's not a tactical coach. He's, he's a man manager. 
Mm. And he's that guy that knows how to push buttons and knows how to get the best out of his players. And maybe, you know, I mean, he's won it in every league now. Is he the only coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In all the five five top leagues or something. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, he's, he's obviously proven himself. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable to think that he was managing yeah. Everton a year ago. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but no, I, I mean, the success is now. I mean, it takes him to another final. Um, he's just, a, I mean, he's the, at the other end of the scale to a Pep, who's super intensive, mm. that's very, very blueprint-based football, very, very grooved um, philosophy. He's a lot looser, Rob. And it just shows yeah. you that the, the, the it takes all types. All types yeah, of coaches yeah. can be set in their different yeah. ways. We're going to talk about Jurgen Klopp, or, mm. or I'd say kind of a mix of mix. these two. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different. Yeah. I, I would well, argue, yeah. Rob. I, I would argue this point. Only that I had a manager, a woman for many years, uh, Joe Kinnear, who was probably very Ancelotti like. Not sitting here saying I'm not talking about you, but a, a man manager. And I yeah. would say, Rob, I'd rather play for a man manager than a great tactician. Because my manager can make you feel a, a, a million dollars. Even on your bad days, he can make you feel a million dollars, mate. Like you're and you're running through a brick wall for him. I know, and, and you know what? This is so is so typical of us and how we're different. Yeah. I'd love to agree with you, but I, I I would. It's just the way we're different, right? I, yeah. I would. I enjoy the football that I played most under the coaches that were super tactical. So, that, yeah, that everybody yeah, had a little plan yeah. and they knew what they were doing. Mm. I enjoyed that, that we all were grooved. And I mean, by the way, it didn't happen many times. Didn't get yeah. many of those coaches. But yeah. we had a guy, Terry Venables, that was an England manager mm. who came oh, and yeah. helped wow. in Middlesbrough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his football, and I just, I loved being part of a team that was totally grooved mm. tactically for a six-month period that got us out of the relegation problems. But again, like, yeah. that's it. Like, there's no right, successful no wrong, it in different yeah. ways. There's no, there's no right. right, wrong way. So, but no, you're, you're right to give him a mention. Mm. Um, what he did in this game, I mean, to keep keep the team in the game, to make those substitutions. This kid comes on, scores a couple of goals. The fans were wanting him on early before that, weren't they? Yeah, they, yeah. They, they you know, I think they yeah. wanted him to start the game. Mm. Um, Valverde played in that right side of forward line. Benzema in the middle and Vinicius Junior to the left hand side. As Casemiro came in, of course, yeah, yeah. he's changing midfield a little. But I thought Casemiro was good, Rob. I know, good one, you yeah. know, yeah. He, he got, he got yellow cards. Yellow cards. He's right on the edge, on. and he knows what he's doing. Right on the edge, he reads the ref, knows the referee's letting a few things go. Just plays on the. Edge. I just thought there was a bit of know-how there for for Madrid tonight as well. Yeah, you know. yeah. I tell you one thing I really liked, and I, I know it happened to a City, and it, it's again another easy thing to look at. But the celebrations with Angelotti when the goals go in, players run to him, subs are on him. That tells you a lot, mate. It tells you awful lot about what what's happening in yeah, that yeah. locker room and and how the feeling is. And listen, they they were they knew they were still in the game, mate. They knew they were still in it at, at one with one goal um, down, and and 90, 92, 95, three goals against the City team of that quality. Incredible, deserve some incredible. Credit. Deserve some credit. Rob, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt Man City. It's going to hurt the manager. It's going to hurt mm. the, the the club going forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they're going to be seen as like this big club that can't win, can't win this trophy, are they? How can you be this global giant and you've not won a Champions League title? Well, Spend the, all the, Kevin De Bruyne. And, mm. He said, didn't he, Rob, that the narrative yeah. has got to change. And this yeah. is the one thing that we need to change the narrative about this football club. Mm. And unfortunately for them, they've just come short again. It, it, it is remarkable. It is a game that we love. It's, love, it's great to hear Peter Drury's commentary. Yeah. I mean, he's such a great commentator and, he, and he's born for moments like today when there's so much craziness going on. Um, and and it, it just it was just one of those games. Like, I'm, making, I'm making notes. I'm getting ready and then like, yeah. wow, what, yeah, what is yeah. happening? Um, how do they recover, Rob, in terms of, I don't know, in, in terms reco- of getting the, the, the back reco- on track? The, the recovery is a Premier League title, mate. Anything short of that, and then we're starting to go, oh, oops, what, what, what's going on here? The, the Premier League title is still the domestic title, still the 38 games, toughest league in the world. The Premier League title helps, doesn't doesn't aid it, doesn't make it all better, but it helps, Rob. And, and that's the stand, they're the standard bearers of the league, and, and that's okay. And then the, the other questions. The other criticisms that can Pep do it, can this team do it, will continue until they eventually land it. So Carl Walker, Rob came off the game injured, right? Yeah. And and, and yeah. you know, some might might argue that wow, he 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 that was a that was a it's defining a moment in the game. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, yeah, and he played it great yeah. and then he couldn't continue the whole game. Mm. Now, I'm not sure how long he's going to be out for. Um, does I'd that, be surprised if we've seen Is there a hangover? Like, is there a hangover, Rob, after that? They put so much into the extra time. They've got Newcastle, haven't they? They've got Newcastle yeah. at home at the weekend. Well, uh, they, this is almost a test of, 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 his, of the management now, isn't it? I mean, we, we all know what's great about it. We all see his teams. But now, the little test, Rob, you're playing Newcastle, mm. um, at home, Newcastle will come free, will come thing. The pressure's on. If Liverpool win, they play the day before Liverpool win, they put a little bit of pressure on. Even the jewel suddenly looks different. I mean, the narrative that Kevin De Bruyne is talking about is that I think most people still feel both these teams could win out and City will win it by a point. The narrative pretty much changes if they lose in the Champions, go out of the Champions League midweek and drop points at the weekend. Woof, yeah. whole different look yeah. on the football club. You know, Rob. Before we move on, Liverpool. I, mm. I just can't. I'm shaking my head. I'm looking at my. I'm looking at the scoring in that it, City yeah. were five three up, five mm. three up, going into the 90th minute on aggregate, yeah. and they're out. Are out of this competition. Remarkable ending to the game. Um, I mean, yeah, you're one six, foot in Paris. You're, you're, you're one foot over yeah. the channel. You're, you're, you're in there, and, and for yeah. some incredible. reason, I mean, it's an incredible game. This competition's incredible. I mean, I, my first wrote I wrote down was bloody football. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, how can you? Manchester City, one minute away from the Champions League final. Done. I know. I know. Bye bye. Let's wow. move it on okay. to the team that they will play in the Champions League final because this this wasn't any less dramatic. Um, I know. Villa, Villarreal, Liverpool. I think I said on the podcast, I don't want one of those pat on my backs, but this won't be easy. I've been in that stadium a few times, mate. I've seen <laughs> Arsenal go there one day and have a real tear up with a Villarreal team that get a goal and that place goes crazy and everybody's behind the team and what was it four minutes Diaz scores uh, for Villarreal third, third minute I think it's the third, third minute, minute. Yeah. and ooh, we had a game on my friend we had a game well, we, had, we, had an, it, it, we had an unrecognisable Liverpool by the way I know. unrecognisable well, but, but, but also Villarreal how different were they from yeah. the front front foot from the very yeah. first whistle they 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 hustled and harried. Yeah. Plus, they, they they moved the ball better well, yeah. than I could ever expect. Mm. Um, first half, I'm, I'm I'm thinking right side of midfield, Naby Keita. Now, yeah, you, you know, he gave the ball away a few times, but it wasn't that. Bad it was the, it yeah. was the spaces that were allowed in that area. The ball kept switching out to his side. Mm. God, yeah, that, that was a big call from Klopp to play Naby Keita and not yeah, Jordan Henderson. Had a hand yeah, Henderson, Henderson's been playing a lot recently. We don't know what his mm. physical condition is, whether he wasn't quite ready to start the game. Big call. And that was a problem first half. But but I, I don't think we've seen, well, maybe a few times, Liverpool is flustered. That's what I, yeah, I would say yeah. they were, Rob. First, they were, they were flustered. Um, yeah. Big atmosphere. And, and, and the, the team has said that we expected all of this, but they still didn't adjust very well. And Cochrane scores ahead on 41st yeah. minute. And you're like, wow, 2 0 down. Um, so and, with, with Emery absolute... as well, just on that, Rob, it's like to me, targeted the fullbacks. They didn't have to do a lot of work down those sides, yeah. down Robbo's side. And, and like, you know, both yeah. goals were kids. So you not great play from For, the fullbacks. Totally. Yeah. Great point. Great, great reminder. Absolutely right. Mm. Um, both fullbacks. I mean, Robertson yeah. got caught on the first. He gets, let's yeah. cross come in for the second one. Trent. As we've seen before, just doesn't anticipate the cross. Mm. So yeah, I mean, so brilliant going forward, but but it, it wasn't a good day for those two no. in the first no, half. No, it wasn't. No, uh, on the no. defensive side of things, but just a remarkable kind of reaction and and from from a home side, you know, we know how small Rio Villarreal are um, yeah. two nil down to come back after you know before half time to go two nil mm. to two 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 was pretty incredible. That being said, <clears throat> we half have time. half time, half time. And we've seen too many times, my friend, Klopp. Mm. We saw it firsthand live at the stadium against Man City in that game where they get caught in behind loads of times. Yeah. They try to yeah, play yeah. out. Klopp fixes things. Against Arsenal is another one, I think, the fix things. Are There's been plenty of games where I don't know whether I've seen a coach so consistently change mentality, not necessarily system, but just, just flow I mean, he did make a change, a big change. is obviously part of it. Luis yeah. Diaz came on yeah, for yeah, uh, yeah. Diogo Jota. Mm. But talk about a man, Rob, that, that when his team needs him, invariably steps up at half time and fixes. He's a fixer. He fixed the problem again. 
He's well, absolutely uh, agree. Um, it was funny because I listened to his interview because I, I was so keen to hear what he said. And he said, I know you think like half time was tough. He said it was one of the easiest half times I'd ever had. <laughs> so he said 11 of my players weren't playing. He said it was easy to fix. We were, we were too rigid in our positions, we didn't have no fluidity. Blah, blah, blah. But you're yeah, right, he, he's a fixer of problems because I'm looking at that game and, and we all have our, you know, listen, we're all managers when we're sitting on the couch watching the match. I'm going, you've got to get a hendo on. You've got to get cater off. You've got to get a hendo on. Yeah. You'll give a bit of drive. You'll watch that space where they're exploiting, where they're yeah. getting in and turning. So I'm thinking hendo's the thing. He puts Diaz on. I'm thinking, yeah, Diaz, but you really need a hendo in the middle of three. I mean, this kid comes on, mate, and changes the game, by the way. Absolute game mm. changer. One on one against yeah. Foyt turns him inside out. Yeah, I tell you what else this, this kid's got about him as well. I know it's a couple of times, Rob. He gets it on that left hand side. He drives in field. He one twos with a midfield player and says, "Give it me back." He joins in with the centre forward. He makes others play. He makes others. Thiago started to play when Diaz <laughs> came on the pitch. By the way, yeah. he's that good. Yeah. Yeah, it is that good. It was, a, it was a brilliant substitution. He kept Cater on, didn't he? Henderson came on for him yeah. a little later. Yeah, but yeah, that was yeah. a change. And to be fair, and I'm not going to steal his line here. Thierry Henry called it on the in the US broadcast yeah. the half time and said, like in this sort of game, when there's high pressure, yeah, Luis uh, Diaz has the ability to take the ball forward, to mm. dribble, to run, to take the ball forward, to, yeah. to, to ease the pressure, to stop that highish press that the Liverpool found difficult from Villarreal. Uh, and he's absolutely right. Jota's a lot of things. Jota's yeah. great at attacking mm. the ball late, scoring goals, you know, when Liverpool are in, in command. I've got the yeah. territory, uh, 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 creating opportunities. But in a game where they struggle to get their game going, give the ball to Diaz. Give yeah. it to him. Yeah, he's yeah. going to dribble the ball. Villarreal players are going to all run back. You know, we've been there, Rob. You know, you've got to all run back mm, and, and it changes the flow of the game. So that was a great sub, of course. Luis Diaz, yeah. what a brilliant signing and impact that he had on the game. But it, it, it absolutely changed from the first minute of the second half. Mm. And, and I put it down to three things, Rob. Absolutely more energy and more effort in, in general. So mm. without the ball, particularly. Definitely a better focus on passing the ball. Their passing was like, mm. they're like, wow, Swapping, like, wasn't it? Give, yeah. Kate, Kate has given away, or Thiago's given the ball away, Thiago, or yeah, trying to play yeah. up for the, uh, Van Dyke. Uh, it's like, so there's so energy, better concentration, focus on their passing, and Luis Diaz. That was the three things that turned this game around. Maybe VRL as well exhausted themselves in that first 45 minutes, Rob, with the work yeah, they put bit. in. Uh, but, but Liverpool, of course, turned, turned it all around and they take control. Fabinho's you know, strike where he looked, he wanted to yeah, pass it yeah. and there wasn't much on, took the shot. Um, and Diaz again, 67th minute, Rob, to make it two. And then uh, Mane as well later on. So just a, I mean, game of two halves, that old cliche, incredible really. But the calmness of the manager, mm, the expertise yeah. of the manager, the experience of the manager and the spirit and the quality in the team to be able to switch it on when they didn't in the first half, is is very, very impressive. I had two sort of similar notes in terms of, of, of what changed. And I kind of, I was kind of sitting there, and you know me with, with my kind of mind, and I'm thinking, he's a bit like this mad professor, isn't he, Klopp? He, he's got all these mannerisms mm. and the smiles and the looks and that. So he's mm. a bit like Einstein, isn't he? There's a problem. He's got 15 minutes to sort out a problem. It's a tactical problem. And he deals with it, Rob. And the other thing that I think he does and is installed in this group, and I think in some respect, there this is where Liverpool are ahead of City. There's a trust in what he'll do that's going to get them over the line. There's, there's like an assurance that what if we do those things correctly that he tells us, we'll get the end result. And there's, the games have shown that, moments have shown that, 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 that you know, whether it's, changing system, whether it's making changes from the bench, whether it's him pumping a crowd up, Rob, whether it's him having a go at, at players. He's got this way of whatever Everything. he does, it has an effect. It has a desired effect. And, and and you know, where we're saying, like, with the Pep got situation, and it's an interesting one, Rob, because Pep's a, Pep's a genius coach, you know, one, a one-off in the generation. But the longer he doesn't win a, cha a Champions League at Man City, there'll be one or two in there might be, mm, mm, you know. 
Cool, we haven't won the there's been others. Yet, there's been we? others, Rob. There's been there's others that have won more than him. Yeah, and I tell that's, you one who threw it out. Your your Touré's agent after they fell out said, "Oh, you go on about this guy. I can't win a Champions League with Man City." And and so it's proven. Hmm. And I'm just saying, and I'm not contrasting the two and the two outstanding men and and this isn't a criticism, but but it seems like there's a buy-in from Klopp because of those things he does, Rob. Check a game changes, and he seems to get more of those right than, 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 than I've ever known. We made an analogy, Rob, about Ancelotti and Pep, right? And yeah. we're saying that Klopp's kind of a mix of that. Well, I think mm. he is. I think he's a he's a guy like Ancelotti that players mm. love and want to play for, and he's tactically. I mean, he's not the same as Pep, but he but he's he's super smart on that as well. Plus, yeah. plus a big game guy. Like mm. he 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 knows how to push the buttons. He knows how to. If his team aren't doing well, he'll yeah. find a way to drag them over the line. Now, no, early on he didn't with Liverpool. A couple of finals, the the, the yeah. Europa League final, whatever it was. But you know, it's like my note, my final note on this game at the bottom of Liverpool column was, how'd you beat this guy? How, how'd you mm. beat him? Mm. Even when they play badly, yeah. Like he adjusts them, he fixed them. And of course, th- th- they often play brilliant. They got all these great goal scorers. But when things aren't going well, I mean, he doesn't have to get him back on track, Rob, yeah. again, with, with what he's done here before. So you, the, the, all the attributes you want as a manager, tactically smart, you yeah. want to be likeable, players want to play for you. But also that drive, you know, we yeah. see him from the sideline, Rob. He, he, he'll have a go at any of his players. He's, he's ruthless as well, Rob, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he's ruthless, he's ruthless as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, if, if you're Mo Salah and you're sitting on the bench, you're sitting on the bench. If you're Mo Salah and he thinks he's got to bring you off at 70, you can pull your face, you're coming off. He does what he does. Yeah. A couple of data and fact for you, my friend, just on this one, because I, I know you love a bit of data and fact. Yeah. Luis so Diaz. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him thinking, what well, you know, this, this kid's special. 25 years of age. You know, he's played 18 times for Porto this season, scoring 14 goals, which would, I believe, get him a winner's medal for Porto. So he could win five oh. titles this season, <laughs> by the way. Just, just so you know, I want to put it out there. Yeah, I'll tell you one help One help that, that uh, Liverpool got, and, and don't want to miss to um, be disrespectful to a, a fellow pro, but Geronimo Rulli, the goalie, hmm. Hmm. not great. Yeah, Did not you know great. he was a Manchester City player in 2016, signed from Real Sociedad? <laughs> you got too much blood, time, it's time six, on your hands, mate. Six million dollars, never played a game, they sailed him back to Sociedad, and he was the goalkeeper, if you remember, played against Man United in the Europa League last season, Scored against De Gea, then saved De Gea's penalty and Villarreal won the Europa League. Boom. Wow. Wow. Data and, well data and fact, what have you been friend. doing? I, 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 wow. Been tremendous. Data and fact. Listen, Listen let's, let's, let's talk about our final because we have a, a special mm. final. And it was interesting, Rob, because I've heard some people on the radio um, today. And again, it's not a universal thing. And, and it's great to have an All England final because it shows the, the, the statue and presence of the pre- Premier League. But some are suggesting an English and Spanish final has a different feel to it. And, and you know, two huge clubs. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a brilliant final. Brilliant. In Paris, that place is going to be packed, isn't it? Well, I'm just going to start with this. Now, again, we've jumped on here at the end of the game. Yeah. We're, we're and, and I saw many, many retweets or, or the social media of yeah. Mohamed Salah. Correct. With the quotes, mm. we have a score to settle. Yeah, <laughs> given Real Madrid beating Liverpool a few years yeah. ago in this competition, and how they beat them, Rob, wasn't it? You remember the Ramez, uh, Ramez fouls on, yeah, he does his shoulder, yeah, tears off the game, all tears, that. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, tremendous final, two legends of football clubs again. Like, my 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 mind thinks that Liverpool can't, I can't see Liverpool losing, Rob. Given the, the the squad, the additions, the new players, and Luis Diaz, given what the manager's showing he can do with his team, you know, given like, I mean, the Premier League race is a, is is incredible now. They're in three, they're in the three cup finals possible: League Cup final, FA Cup yeah. final. Well, they won the League Cup final, of course. FA Cup final, Champions League final. I mean, wow! I I, I can't see Real Madrid. Uh, but I said this about Man City. I, know, I felt I know, strongly that Man City were a better team. At this point, I'm, I'm going to hold my I'm going to hold my judgment. I'm going I'm going to I'm going to see how Premier League plays out. I'm going to see how the FA Cup Come on. plays out. I'm going to wait. <laughs> give me give me just let me get over today. I'm a lot older than you. It took a, took a lot of wind out of me today. I, I, I'm going to give it time. Yeah. But 
listen, we're in for a classic, mate. We're in for an absolute classic, uh, Conway. Mm. And you, you just think about where Real Madrid have come from. Was it got beat by Sheriff in the gr- group stages? Yeah. PSG, yeah. Chelsea, Man City. I mean, should have been that. Come from behind. If, if you're in there, if you're in their camp, by the way, you're thinking this is ours. By the way, it's destined to be ours. And that's what yeah, Liverpool yeah. And, and Klopp are going to have to deal with. Okay, my friend, let's, let's move on to um, a little bit of domestic matters. Um, a couple of big games coming up at the weekend. Liverpool hosts Spurs on Saturday. That's 2.45 Eastern time on USA. I think there's a thought, Robert, amongst the neutrals that Spurs could be their banana skin that might be away in Liverpool in the way they play with the counter-attack, with Liverpool's high line. Possibly with the emotions of getting to a Champions League. Listen, if they play the first 45 uh, against Spurs, like they did against Villarreal, against you know Son Kane, and looks like Kulusevski will be back in the team, that could be that could be a bit dangerous, my friend. Yeah, I mean this is the toughest game, toughest game they've got. I mean they've got Vier, uh, Aston Villa, I think, away after Villa, this, yeah. which again yeah. could be very very difficult. But this is, yeah, this is the game that's that kind of. It, it, in some ways, it suits uh, Antonio Conte's philosophy, yeah, Rob. Yeah, in yeah. Anfield, we know that. And then, of course, they'll break, and that's when they've looked at their best when we've seen them. Um, now whether whether they can, whether their defensive three in particular, Spurs, yeah. mm. can stop Liverpool. That's the question. That's yeah. the question. Yeah, I don't absolutely. like David and Eric Dyer as good defenders in this team. I don't like the wing backs right now. Emerson Royal is playing. Um, Regalon is out really? injured again in this game, so Sessignon will play on the left hand side. You know, it, it, it Spurs at their best under this manager. I really think they could give uh mm. Liverpool a fright, but given the defensive players and given, like, again, he can bring in, he can rest and rotate a You're little freshen bit. Freshen up a bit, Connie. That's what I was thinking he as can. well. You know, Hendo yeah. had a good dress, Matty will come back in. Diaz, stops, this one, Diaz stops. Yep. I mean, Mane's in great form at the moment. You just keep playing him, wouldn't yep. you? Mo's yeah. Mo, so yeah, I think we you still got a fancy uh, Tottenham, uh, yeah. sorry Liverpool, but um, Tottenham, well, we'll we'll give them a test certainly in the way they play. Man City at home to Newcastle. I think normally we we, we would say mm, yeah, their football will find a way, but it's going to be interesting this one, Rob. Atmosphere. Somebody said to me mm. this is a, a bit of a challenge for the City fans now. The City fans need to do a little bit of what Everton did and Liverpool we've seen, yeah. and, and to, they need they need the fans now to get. They're going to have to push them and help them over over the line on this one. It's a character test, isn't it? And you're right mm, with the fans yeah. as well. It's a character yeah. test. How mm. can they? How can they react from from dumping out of the yeah. tournament that they're desperate yeah. to get? The, the the city fans have seen titles from City before. Mm. You know, that, how, how much is the fans and the the, the team going to be up for it yeah. to react to that? And it's a so it's a bit of a test of the spirit in the team. How down are they? Because we all know that's the one they want, the Champions League. Yeah. Um, so th- that's what I'm looking forward to, to see mm. the kind of reaction. And I would have to think that, you know, there's going to be a strong enough reaction, Rob. Yeah. And, they, and you know, they, again, the squad is big. I'm sure Grealish will play and a few of them, and Gundogan. There's Early a few, there's few of the players yeah. that can play. Yeah. So I do think they'll beat Newcastle at home. Um, but it's the Liverpool game, you know, being the toughest one, mm. that's going to be the one I think that could affect the title race. Yeah. But we'll have to mm. wait and see. Yep, Anfield will be crazy. Uh, the Etihad needs to be too, helping those teams yeah. through. Just wrapping up a little bit of business, my friend. It was a little bit of a mess of us not to um, mention Fulham uh, back into the Premier League. Marco Silva's done a brilliant job getting his, his team um, in. Mitrovic with an incredible, is it, I think, 43 goals, is it? In, 42 in, or 43, 43, yeah. 43. yeah. Guy, Whitting, Guy, Guy Whittingham's record. Uh, fantastic season for them. Great scenes going up as champions. And Bournemouth, a couple of seasons after uh, Eddie Howe left them, Scotty Park had left Fulham, goes to Bournemouth, doing a brilliant job and got them up in, into the Premier League. So two teams we've seen, we know, um, love the football, love the football clubs. How are they going to stay in this time around, mate? How are two men who've sort of failed in the Premier League, if, if you want, in terms of, of mm. um, doing a good job there and, and keeping teams in there, how, how do mm. they get better this team? How, how, do, how do they stay? Well, they stay by they need outstanding recruitment, Rob, don't they? The man, the managers are you know they're they're very good managers, but they they need great players. They need some great recruitment. Else, it's going to be a similar kind of story. All the teams, pretty much, well, not all of them, but 
we know how hard it is, Rob. We saw the team Norwich that win with record amount of goals and points yeah. last year, whatever they got, Norwich struggle. Um, it's going to be about how they recruit. It really is. I, I, interesting, I read a big, long article today, actually, on Tony Khan, the, oh, yeah. the chairman, I think, of, um, of Fulham, and basically reiterating, he, he's, he kind of runs the the sporting side of the club, Tony Khan. Yeah. He's an yeah, analytics yeah. guy. They're going down the numbers, the analytical approach, like that, Brentford. That's the son, isn't it? That's the son of... It's the, the son of, yeah, yeah of Shah yeah. Khan, the main yeah. owner. That's right. So yeah. interesting. Like, he's going to... He has a lot of power, Rob, you know, and it's it's yeah. just difficult to, like, a guy that's... that's how can I say? He doesn't really know the game like a football mm. professional, yet mm -hmm. his experience working in sporting clubs... His experience and he has, I think he has a stats business. I think that's what his yeah. business is, his analytics. And he likes his recruitment, kind of scouting network. He loves working with Marco Silva. He feels that with him and his mm. and his scouting crew, with it with uh, input from Silva, that they can do the business to stay in the league. Dream. He doesn't like the yo-yo mm. thing. But that's a big, big call. And for Bournemouth, yeah. second season back, Scotty Parker, shock, saw his tears in his eyes. He's a very yeah. emotional guy. Mm. I played with him at Charlton for a season at the end of my career. Brilliant, brilliant bloke. Um, he'll be emotional and he'll, he'll they'll both have it on Rob to stay in the division. We know that. Um, you look at yeah. the teams, Philip Billing, you know, there's a, a lot of players that were yeah, there before. Were there, they? Same, yeah. same with Fulham. I yeah. guess a difference and, and final point, Rob, uh, on Fulham is Mitrovic. He didn't play, Scott Parker mm. didn't play him before. Yeah. And he's going to play every game. It's yeah. whether he can get 15 plus goals that might give them a chance. But mm. I mean, congratulations. I, I, it's a great to see the scenes of promotion, brings back some. Yeah. Nice memories from a long time ago for me, but we all know that the Premier League's jump up and it's going to be hard for these two to stay in the league without really good recruitment. Two little notes, my friend, that I think, um, again, just wanted to, to touch on. And one you've just reminded me, David Brooks, the mm. uh, Bournemouth midfield player who had just been told he's cancer-free as well. Great news for him, obviously with the promotion as well. Uh, you know, mm. really good news. For a yeah. player we saw in the Premier League, good talented doing player. some really good, good player, things, Rob. wasn't he? And, and, yeah. and had a, a difficult time, but great news for him. And the other thing, Rob, I just wanted to mention at the end of um, Jurgen Klopp on one of the biggest nights, he talked about feeling like the first Champions League. He said also congratulations to Nat Phillips, who was at Bournemouth, who was part of Liverpool squad to get him there. And, and you know those little oh. things that you go, that's what makes him special. I mean, yeah. does he have to mention it? Is it important in the big night for yeah. Liverpool? That's the difference with, wow. with you and yeah. popping them up. Those, those little bits of detail, Rob, I think other players see and know and understand go, that's why you, you run to a brick wall for them. So really nice mm. touch from you and Klopp. Great to see Bournemouth and Fulham back in, in the uh, Premier League. And we'll see how they do in the summer, how the recruitment looks and, and how they can go. Listen, mate, mm. too much for my old ticker this weekend. It's an incredible drama of football. Crazy. Liverpool make it to Paris. They're going to play Real Madrid in this year's Champions League final. For City, it's another year of mm, what could have been. Congratulations both Fulham and Bournemouth. We'll see you in the Premier League next season. We're going to be back Sunday. That's May the 8th. That's Mother's Day. And that's after a visit. We go down to the Kentucky Derby when we must we must have going to try a few hats. We're definitely going to try no, a few mate, juleps, my friend. Uh, yep. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with two Robbie. Thanks for listening. Be safe. Stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good, good night. night. I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.